So one of my areas of interest and one uh, topic that I cover with the students is the impact of screening. And I normally talk about screening in relation to the diagnosis of cancer. So I, a diagram like this is very helpful to explain to the students what the consequences of screening can be. So on the horizontal axis here we have time and on the vertical axis I've represented cancer progression. So here we have microscopic level of cancer in a tissue then where it may be progressed from being microscopic to being localised then spreading more regionally, so beyond the initial tissue to other regional tissues, and finally the cancer may become metastatic. What I've represented here with repeated dotted lines are repeated episodes of screening for these, uh, the cancer that we're interested in. So the sort of cancer that we would envisage that screening is useful for is one that would follow a trajectory like this. So over time, it's initially microscopic, it then becomes uh, probably detectable clinically, but localised, then it spreads regionally and eventually becomes metastatic and is likely to kill the person who has it. So you can see that with a cancer with that trajectory, having repeated episodes of screening where you have the repeated opportunities to detect it could be really helpful in terms of diagnosing it earlier and therefore being able to institute uh, treatment earlier. So what happens uh, when we uh, detect a tumour like that earlier than we otherwise would by screening uh, we actually have what's called lead time so that we can actually move our knowledge of the existence of the tumour forward by the amount of time between when it might have presented clinically and when we can detect it, to detect it by screening. Now, we don't have this opportunity with all cancers. So for example, there are what are, what are called interval cancers, which are very aggressive and very quickly growing, and they will present clinically in between episodes of repeated screening. So we're not going to be able to help someone uh, by screening with a tumour that's growing as aggressively as this one. A concept that the students really need to understand and which is quite difficult to grasp, I think, is an issue called length time bias. And what that means is that screening actually detects a different spectrum of cancer than the one that would present clinically because cancer is not just one uh, disease, it doesn't all cover um, or follow the same spectrum, it follows a whole range of uh, trajectories. And if we do repeated screening, we are actually more likely to find slower growing tumours than we would find if we waited until the disease presented clinically. That's because we actually have more opportunities to detect these very slow growing tumours than we have to detect the more quickly growing tumours. So we actually end up with a totally different spectrum of disease which is diagnosed when we use screening compared with when we don't. And that's, as I say, it's called length time bias and it's very, very important for people to understand that because if you compare the outcome of people with screen detected cancer versus clinically detected cancer, you will see a difference purely for this reason alone. Now the other thing to understand is that the ultimate extension of this concept of length time bias is what's called overdiagnosis. And that's where you actually detect by screening disease that would never have presented clinically in the person's lifetime if you hadn't screened them. So that means that if you start pe treating people for that type of disease, you're actually turning someone into a patient with a disease that would they, they would not have ever known they had if you hadn't screened them. And for people in that category, the intervention actually represents all harm and no benefit.